to another edition of Connecting the Dots, where we have thought leaders, game changers, and innovators from the media and telco industry. Today, my guest is Cristina Garces from Madrid, from Optiva Media. And welcome, Cristina. Hello. Hello, Andy. Thank you for having me here. How are you doing? Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. Very well. Thank you. Hope the same is true for you now in Madrid. It is true. The situation is a lot better now. Great to hear that. Yes. So tell our viewers a little bit about Optiva Media and yourself. I'm CEO at Optiva Media. Optiva Media is a company that has been helping super aggregators with their metadata. We're helping them with their applications for multi-device and also doing a very fine testing so they have the best applications for their customers. This is where we absolutely specialize. We have been in the business for more than 15 years. All the management comes from uh, an operator background. I remember a friend from Atelco saying, if you want to be super aggregated, you need super metadata. So why is that? Uh, absolutely. You need metadata because the amount of choice that the viewers have is incredible. So you have all these tremendous catalogs of TV series, movies, documentaries. In the end, it's very difficult to choose and you need to present the information or you need to present the content to the users in a way that is attractive, in a way that it stands out and it goes to good recommendation engines, it goes to good search engines. All these need to be fed with real good metadata. Okay, so you have uh, quite some experience in that. You're live since I think two years with Orange Spain and Vodafone Spain. What are the key takeaways that you would recommend somebody who wants to be a super aggregator? What are the difficult things that people need to take care of? Handling metadata is always very underestimated. Companies have come to realize that they really need to take care and that they really need to have a sensible operation to be able to present that data. And, and there are different factors. First, you need to automatize. We are handling in one of our operations uh, 100,000 contents daily. You need yeah. to have your VOD, your catalogs, your EPG, your catch up organized, everything with a unique ID. So you need to make sure that you have this unique ID that allows the user to find the content and then in a second step, see where this content is available. You need to have slick images, very good quality, good titles. You mm -hmm. really need to make sure that you have all that present. You need also uh, to present the characters, the crew in a very good quality. We are talking about video, we're talking about experience, we're talking about 4K, so you really need to have very good quality in all your video management. Then you need to export metadata to the different devices with different images sizing, if, uh, different images quality, the same as you have different video quality. You have posters, you have backgrounds, you have uh, covers, uh, you name it. Okay. So one of the big topics I heard a few times is metadata enrichment. What is that? And which role does AI or machine learning play for that? So metadata enrichment is all the additional information that you can gather around that content. It's not only uh, the synopsis or the cast and crew or the uh, director or the images, it's also uh, ratings, recommendation, uh, gossip, uh, Twitter feeds. It's uh, all the information that you can find on social media is um, all what surrounds uh, a content. Is also tagging. Tagging can be based on not only genres as we have seen today, but also uh, moods. Uh, how do I feel today? And the evolution for this goes uh, with machine learning because it is not possible to extract all the information manually. And we are working in ways of have, doing that automatically with all the metadata that we have, but also are advancing in being able to extract the information from the video itself. And okay. that's the real challenge. Process the video in a timely manner and be able to extract all the information that you need from the video itself. Okay. So when all that happened, does it mean the EPG is 
debt is not needed anymore um, or will it be just a different way of EPG? What's your view? I, I don't think the EPG is dead. I'm, uh, I think we, we're seeing the uh, second or third generation of the EPG. Yeah, we're still being presented with all the information for the, uh, for the content. It's just that we have lost the timeline. And this is where I see the evolution of the EPG. But in the end, it's the same old EPG without the grid factor. <laughs> yeah. OK. So one of the things you mentioned as well, you're doing apps, right? Um, so metadata is one, apps, and also integration. Um, or what differentiates you, or what's your approach to developing apps? You need to have a very nice UX. You need to have an application that adapts itself to the different uh, devices. But the angle that we are working on is more having a connection to our metadata and tagging tool that allows you to build collections and build different rails that you can base either on preference or on tagging or whatever editorial um, content you're interested in pushing into the, uh, into the customer. So it's more the link between the application and the metadata angle that we're working on. Of okay. course, we do have a very nice and sleek application suits that works, you know, multi-screen <laughs> devices. We've been working in this industry long enough to understand uh, what can be done and cannot be done. Uh, we come from the set-top box background, which is the hardest to come from. So the rest is easier. <laughs> Peanuts, almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> So still, you say you need to test a lot and you are testing a lot for some of your customers. We have a, a practice that is called Qualtiva that covers our, our uh, testing services, quality assurance services. Uh, it, it's completely multi-device. So, and we have been testing set-top boxes since the very beginnings to the uh, new devices. Now we have now a um, television lab in the uh, south of Spain with 200 TVs, 200 smart TVs, where we can test several models. And we also, of course, working on the automation angle. The latest automation that we have included is voice automation, where we are able to transform voice commands to text command to set up box or device commands, and then make sure that what comes back, the result is in line with what the uh, customer requested. Okay. And you see there's a trend towards UIs using more and more voice? Absolutely. I, yeah. Absolutely. I'm always surprised when people underestimate the impact that voice is going to have at home. Uh, and not only at home, but in our lives. So I think more and more we're going to see a voice integrated in our surroundings. Uh, because it's very natural. And so that means that UI and the interaction paradigms will have to change in the future. Absolutely. absolutely. Integrating natural language, which is a real challenge. Okay. Um, so that brings us to the, the crystal ball question. So if I give you $100 million, how would you invest that? I mean, definitely in machine learning. I think that all uh, what I was mentioning before, being able to treat video and extract as much information from the video as possible to have like an auto catalogation of movies depending on your recommendations or your your what you like i think that would be very powerful today editorialization is still and curation is still very manual so we're gonna see optiva become an ai and machine learning company soon that still continues to help super aggregators to get off the ground and become big with a fantastic UI. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. And uh, we speak soon. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Bye. Bye-bye.